If you need some non-QM products, Oak Tree Funding has got like more than anybody else right now. Oak Tree! Oak Tree, man. They've got all the products you could possibly want, non-QM. Get more deals done. All you gotta do is talk to one of their account executives. Click the banner you see right now on your screen. See that banner? Just scroll down when the video's done, right? You'll see the banner there. Click it, fill out a form, and an Oak Tree account executive will get a hold of you. Get your deal done. Expanding the products that you can do is only gonna make you more money. So check it out. These guys are fantastic to work with. And anyways, moving on with the show. The Market Composite Index, it's a measure of mortgage loan application volume. It decreased by 5.1% on a seasonally adjusted basis from last week. On an adjusted basis, the the index decreased by 5% compared with the previous week. Now the refinance index decreased 7% from the previous week. That was still 84% higher from a year ago, yet it's down right now. So apps are off by 5%. For purchases and refis, well, they're off by 7%. For many, that's like taking a 7% pay cut, even though you're up 84% from last year. Now, we spoke yesterday about the inversion of rates and applications. Rates continue to drop, yet applications are going down. It should be the other way around right? You see, when rates go from six to four and a half, that creates a refi market. When they go from four and a half to three, that creates another market. Churning! Question, where do we go from three percent to two and a half? That isn't a refi market. Maybe if they go to one percent, I don't know. I mean, I guess that could happen, but I doubt it. You see, we really can't go much lower to create another refi market. We've kind of hit the bottom here. Now, there's still a glut of folks who should refi and will refi, and that will sustain our low rate environment for quite some time. All indications are that rates will remain low for the foreseeable future. So to understand this, the 30 year fixed rate mortgage interest rate is just below 3% right now. So we look at the spread of mortgages over the 10 year treasury. If you go back to April, that spread over the 10 year treasury was 265 basis points. By June, that spread narrowed to 243 basis points, and then you started to see mortgage rates coming down. The spread between mortgage rates and the US Treasury in June was still 60 basis points above the 2019 average of 180 basis points. What that suggests is that there still is room for rates to come down, but as Frank said, how much? Will it be enough to sustain this refinance market or will it be enough to spark a whole new round of refinances? Okay, check this out. So what you're looking at here is the effective federal fund rate. Not the best indicator, but close. The bottom is at a rate of zero. See that big bump that goes from 2016 to 2020? That's who you're refinancing. See how low the rates were before 2016? That was the first refi market that took care of the previous higher rate environment. It's worth noting that the market went from 2010 to 2016. That was a six year window that ensured all older loans would get a rate that would not need to be addressed by our current low rates. So that bump in rates from 2016 to the beginning of 2020 is the pile of gold you're all mining from now for refinances that is there's still a bunch there but the number you have to understand it's finite the moral to the story is pick all the low-hanging fruit you can with these refinances now but understand if we're all shoveling from the same pile eventually that pile is going to go away and we're going to have to transition to something other than refinances and that's why as we keep telling you you have to speak with your real estate agent partners and you have to start looking at the purchase market because it will come back around especially with the uncertainty that we have right now in our country come October when the Heels Act comes through and we burn through that money what happens next? Talk to those real estate agents. And oh, by the way, you might want to be looking at Listing Booster Premium Services, where we do everything for you. We'll cultivate that lead for you. We'll post that lead for you. And we'll hand off a highly, highly convertible prospect who you can make your client in the purchase market. You might want to check it out. There's a banner for Listing Booster Premium Services right down below that Brian was talking about. You can click it and we can talk to you about it. Now moving on, real estate giant Zillow, enemy of the real estate industry, I might add, is back up and running in all of its markets. That means they're going to be buying houses at higher fees than realtors at discounted prices to sellers, pulling those profits out of local communities for shareholders' personal enrichment. How wonderful of them. Isn't that great of them? It's just wonderful of them. So here's a question. Remember when the market took a crap at the beginning of COVID? <laughs> Carol, God damn it. 
When there was uncertainty in the market, Zillow and other iBuyers were trying to find ways to get out of contracts to buy homes. You know, basically screwing over sellers. Once again, I wonder if those stories were big enough to let the larger real estate community see who these guys really are and do an about face to not give them money anymore. Home builder D.R. Horton is now working with Zillow and encouraging those buying their new homes to sell their existing homes through Zillow offers. Here's a quote. We're excited to partner with Zillow to bring more convenience and flexibility to the home buying experience, said Donald R. Horton, chairman of D.R. Horton, in a statement. This is a great opportunity to provide our customers with new options to streamline the process of selling their existing home and then help them move into their new DR Horton home more efficiently. Translation from DR Horton, we are excited to partner with Zillow and take these home buyers and streamline their process by taking them out to the woodshed and beating them to a pulp and taking all of their money. That's just ridiculous. But heck, at least we get paid, pal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, but damn it, we're going to get paid, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're not going to beat this whole thing into the ground again, but I cannot for the life of me understand why any real estate agent or company would support or work with Zillow. That makes about as much sense to me as the Zillow is not working with agents. They're working at your expense. And when you give them money, you are funding your nemesis. So just to understand, if you follow through with Chairman Donald R. Horton's recommendation with your existing house, you're gonna leave money on the table and Zillow will be more than happy to take that off your hands. Work with a traditional realtor if you're a consumer. It's more affordable, you get better service and you, the seller, are gonna make more money. It's absolutely true. You wanna work with a local real estate agent and you wanna work with a local lender. Better service, keeping money in your community, more affordable, better rates across the board. Understand that disrupting an industry doesn't always make it better. And in this case, it absolutely doesn't. But hey, if you're meeting us for the first time, do me a favor, subscribe. If you've watched this before and you like what we're doing, share it with other people in the real estate and lending community on your social sites. Just hit that Facebook button. Keep the conversation going because the dialogue is important. And listen, we bring this to you for free. It helps us, let us help you, and you help us. Make it a great day, guys, and we will see you on Friday. Be safe. Download the National Real Estate Post mobile app today. Available on Apple Store and Google Play. Just search National Real Estate Post.